Hello. Um, it is uh, really early in the morning. <laughs> I couldn't sleep, so I decided to do something with my time. We're going to look at rape. Um, and the thing is, this is a very, very uh, personal um, kind of uh, topic to talk about. Um, as is the case with most people, um, obviously I have... Uh, some history in my family with this topic and the problem is I'm trying to not go to extremes you know there's some people who actually not some people the majority of people kind of just take sides on this either they're overly to one side or overly to the other side and so I'm trying to be fair and look at it biblically so I mean obviously that's gonna have problems with it uh, first off I mean this is this is the the most simple aspect of rape and really with any sin that I don't understand why Christians don't, don't get this, it's never the victim's fault. That, that shouldn't be that difficult of a concept. Let's take some hypotheticals. You've got a husband and wife married. The husband looks at porn. Whose fault is it? Well, it's the husband's fault. Well, if the woman would have known. No, no. It's the husband's fault. It's it's not that difficult of a concept. When when we get to heaven, do right, you honestly think that we're going to be able to stand before God and say, look, God, if it wasn't for them? You know, and once again, if it really was someone else's fault with anything, not, not with rape, but I mean with sin, if it really is somebody else's fault, God will know and he'll take care of it. If you look at Genesis, um, you know... <laughs> You've got the man saying it was the woman, and the woman saying it was the snake. And so everyone who did something wrong got punished. But passing the buck to somebody else really didn't fix the problem. They were still kicked out of the Garden of Eden in the end. And I guess that's kind of my point. Don't don't push your blame on some. Don't push your sin on somebody else. Oh well, if you and it, no, it's your fault. Your sin, your fault. Um, James 1.14 says this in, in chapter 1 verse 14 it says but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust now this <coughs> is really all throughout scripture it's not that difficult of a concept we are responsible for our own actions and that's just the way of it so, if someone was raped, whose fault is it? The person who did the raping. Well, if she wouldn't have dressed like that, no. No. It is the person's fault who did the raping. Okay, this, it, this shouldn't be something that Christians expect for the person who was raped to take the blame. It just doesn't even make sense. Second, we shouldn't put a rapist's future ahead of the victim's future. Um, there was a series of, of I don't want to call it cases because it was ridiculous how uh, immoral that judge was, but let's just skip that for a second. Um, hypothetical situation, because this hasn't happened. Uh, so a uh, college boy rapes a girl and oh no let's let's make sure that we don't punish him so that way he can go on and have a future mm. see if there's anything that's absolutely abundantly clear throughout the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, uh, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Malachi, all the prophets it's the idea of justice and see sometimes we kind of lose sight of that we think well Jesus came to save us, yes, but where there is no repentance, there can be no forgiveness. That's just a fact of life. Not only that, but once again, when somebody does something wrong, just because Jesus came doesn't mean that he now expects our society, our society to be lawless and just do whatever we want. So with that being said, if you take Micah 6.8, for instance, where it says, hey, do justice, do what's right. 
we shouldn't put a rapist feature ahead of the victims. If somebody was raped, then the person who did the raping should be punished for it. Now, obviously, they shouldn't be punished more so than the crime requires. That's just common sense. But still, there should be, obviously, some kind of a result for this. Um, that's one of the things in the law, is if a man raped, excuse me, raped a virgin, um, well, women were really graded at that time by whether they had had sex or not. Not, not men. Women were. This was a very uh, male-oriented society. That's, that's, you know, that, that's the way things worked over there. Um, and if a man did that to a woman, he had to at least try to marry her. Now, she could deny it, and the father could say no. So both of those things could happen. They, the, the, the person who was raped didn't have to get married. But he had to at least try and marry her and, and to provide for her. Why? Well... It's a little expensive to have more than one wife, especially back then. And, uh, you know, we're talking about your estate and everything. It's just very difficult to, to do that. So eventually, men would stop raping because they can't afford it. I mean, this is this is just common sense here. Hey, you did something. Now, you're going to have to pay for it for the rest of your life. And they could never divorce that person. So, uh, you know, it's not like, oh, well, I married them now. I can marry them. So, I mean, divorce them. So it's not like that. So, absolutely, you know, people should pay for their crimes. Um, unfortunately, now here's here's the other side of the coin, and and this is this is a lot of times that people are raped, they will not come forward, and there will be no justice, no consequences for the action. That's the unfortunate case of how things are right now. We can change that, but it's going to take some time. First off, um, well, I'll mention this later, but it's absolutely absolutely essential to well I'll come back to that um, unfortunately in a legal standing you really can't present a case if there's no evidence even if a rape did occur and there's no witnesses and there's no evidence you, you can't convict someone based off of nothing I mean if it's just a claim that anybody can make a claim uh, I know drug addicts all the time around here who make claims that aren't true. So, you know, obviously there is the factor that nobody is nobody is perfect and everybody, you know, sins in different areas. You know, some people lie, for instance. Um, but from a legal standing, we cannot expect for the law to convict without evidence. Now, that's not fair in cases of people who um, were raped and there's no evidence and no witnesses. I absolutely agree, but that's the shortcomings of the law. However, rest in peace knowing that um, God does see. And you can know that even where human justice fails, um, I know this seems like, oh, well, that's not worth anything. Well, actually, it's worth more than you think. Because, remember, anything that a human court system judges will be temporary. Eventually, that person will either die or get free or whatever. Either way, they probably won't get what they deserve anyways. But sins cannot be hidden from God. Don't forget that. And so with that being said, regardless of whether justice is met or not, hear me on this. Please hear me on this. Justice being brought to the situation will not heal you. I'm not saying you shouldn't seek justice. I'm absolutely, I've made that point absolutely clear. Seek justice. However, aside from justice being met, you have to seek healing. And if you are someone else, try and find those people out and help them heal. So if it didn't happen to you, try and help the, other, the person who did happen to heal. And if it did happen to you, please try and get help. Please try and get help. It's not something you should be like, well... I'll just do this one solo. No, don't don't even try to do that. It's just that's nonsense. We as people need help. I mean, it's just it's just a fact of life. Um, you know, war veterans who come back with PTSD, they need help. Well, you've got something that happened. Not necessarily seeing somebody get shot. To them, although, depending on the case, maybe you did. Uh, but still, you do need help. Um, and don't be ashamed of that. You know, don't be don't feel like this is a weakness. Look at it like this. You survived it, and. You're still here, and you are a survivor. 
Don't look at yourself as a victim. Look at yourself and say, I survived this. And I can get through this. Now, as a Christian, we know what hope and comfort and, and joy and, 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 and renewal and encouragement comes from the presence of God. Um, however, non-Christians um, don't really know that. Uh, you know, so with that being said, you just kind of have to look at things differently um, as a non-Christian. Thankfully, as, as a Christian, we can look to um, what the new heavens and the new earth when, when we'll be given a resurrected body and we won't have to uh, carry those burdens anymore. Um, so, however, there is something that should probably be, probably be addressed. See, back in the day, you had Christians that were very legalistic. Um, you know, everything was about rules and rules and rules. Well, with that being said, this generation of Christians is kind of going to the other extreme and saying, okay, everything's okay. There shouldn't be any rules for anything. And uh, it's just not real healthy. Not a real healthy point of view, especially considering that God loves all of his children. And so, so that's kind of important. So Philippians 2 3 says, um, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important as more important than yourselves. You know, look out for other people. Uh, and then in 1 Timothy um, chapter 2. verses 9 through 10 it says Likewise, likewise I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing modestly and discreetly not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments but rather by means of good works as is proper for women making a claim to godliness so here Paul's saying look hey let's not try to to turn heads Let, let's you know let's not let's not be slutty now obviously I'm not one of those people who thinks well, a woman sleeping around is slutty, but a man sleeping around is okay. I mean, obviously, I think that's stupid. That's just absolutely stupid. But with that being said, we can all agree that the that the female figure is a lot more attractive than the male's. I mean, let let's just be real here for a second, okay? Um, I mean. Come on, is that even a question? I don't really think that women get with men because they're attracted to them. I think that, I don't know why. Maybe a moment of weakness. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever it is, you know, it's it's clearly obvious that women have the superior body. So let let's let's get past that. <laughs> but you know, as a Christian, try and dress modestly, anyways. Not because necessarily you know rules, 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 or because it's your fault if you get raped. No, that's nonsense. No. But just because you know that men are weak. And you know that men are, uh, you know, pigs, <laughs> especially when it comes to sex. You know, don't, well, they shouldn't, absolutely they shouldn't, absolutely. But men do a lot of stupid stuff that they shouldn't do. You know, and you know, this goes for men too. Don't do things, if there is a woman, for instance, having, you know, sexual addiction problems and stuff, don't try and tempt them. I mean, come on, come on. Um, another big thing here is anywhere that pornography is not checked, rape will be a problem. And that's because pornography has this unrealistic expectation, okay, just completely unrealistic. First off, you know, the people in the videos, they just, oh man, they just, god, oh, they're going at it, they just, every, it could, it's like pleasure central, everything, it, you know, if you've ever had sex, you know, the sex isn't really how it looks on pornography, it just, that's just not how it is. Um, yeah, it's just not, I mean, that's, that's like a hypothetical situation, and, I mean, everything is just completely nonsense. In the real world, if you treat people like you do in a pornography film, that's called rape. You know, it's, eh, eh. and so the problem is, is we're not addressing pornography, but yet we're seeing the effects of pornography. See, pornography teaches us sex on demand. Anytime we want it, we can take it. Saying off, it kind of rewrites how we think and look at sex and, and, and those kinds of things. And it just completely, well, I could go on, but that's another discussion for another, for another time. Moral of the story being, anywhere where pornography is left unchecked, it will affect rape. In your house, do whatever you can. Put up blockers, put up, uh, you know, they have, Triple um, X Church has, has, an, has a thing that you can download that, uh, make sure that you can't go to bad sites. 
Um, there's uh, something called, uh, I think it's called K9 or something like that. But anyways, uh, and there's a lot of different uh, adult restrictions you can put on, uh, parental guidance stuff. Look into that. And out of that, but vote if you can against these kinds of things. Try and restrict pornography. Pornography is one of those things that should not exist. Um, and it definitely is having a negative effect on the community at large. I think that's, I mean, I don't even think anybody could argue with me on that. Um, and this one's extremely important. Don't hang around people who don't show self-control. If you're hanging out with a man who just, I mean, when he drinks, he drinks. When he smokes, he smokes. I mean, people who just don't show self-control. Be careful. Maybe don't be left alone. Maybe don't date them. And I know that everybody has a weakness, but there's a difference between fighting something and just openly embracing something. And, you know, if you've got, like, an introvertive kind of guy who's standoffish and, you know, has intimacy problems and doesn't treat people real good, has a real short temper, chances are, you know, that's not real good catch. Pro chances are he's, he's probably looking at porn and kind of needing to deal th sort through some stuff. And I'm not saying, oh, give up on people who are struggling. That's not what I'm saying at all. But there comes a point when you have to say, are you willing to get raped and mistreated and beaten for an emotion that will pass? Because trust me, when you are on the floor bleeding, I'm pretty sure that you're not going to have great love for that man. But spouse abuse and abuse of different kinds, I guess, is a conversation of different kind. Anyways, um... Don't be put in compromising positions, walking down poorly, poorly lit roads, for instance. I mean, get a car, find somebody who has a car, do something besides that. Um, another important point, stand up for yourself. Please stand up for yourself. You know, don't let him get away with it just because he's your boss or just because he's your uncle or whatever. Don't, don't let him get away with it because a man who gets away with it will do it again. And there just has to be a point where you say, enough is enough. I will not be treated like that. You've got to stand up for yourself. Look at how many tweets have been posted online about the hashtag MeToo. I mean, goodness sakes. There's just a lot of them. And I don't know if every single one of the claims is true. I don't know. I don't really care. That's not really the point. The point being, there's a lot of times that women are mistreated and touched when they don't want to be touched. And it just, it just needs to stop. It needs to stop, and I personally believe that two main factors would greatly reduce this. First off, pornography, if we could get rid of that. Second off, if women would learn to stand up for themselves, I absolutely think that that would drastically reduce, drastically reduce. And I know that they teach, they'll, they'll condition you with, with, with threats and, and, and make you think that there's no way out and all kinds of stuff like that. It's just not true. It's just not true. And not only that, but it's better to die. Than to live like that. Never forget that. It's better to die than to live in that world. Get out whatever the cost. Stand up for yourself. If you can't, find somebody who can stand up for you. Do find some way. Find some way. Silence is not worth it. I don't care what, what you think in your head. It's just not worth it. Well, if I do this, I'll lose my job. So lose your job. So lose your job. You've, you, you've got to stand up for yourself. I hope I'm not coming across as, as judgmental. I, I'm really trying to be more of supportive. Um, things have happened to people I'm very close to that is not right, and there's nothing I can do about it. And unfortunately, there's nothing the law can do about it either. And so I, I'm more of speaking from agitation than anything. Um, but please, 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 if there's anything that can that can cause you to step out and do something about it, then then please do. Please do. You know, I've seen dogs be able to um, resist food when it's put in front of them until you give them the command to eat. Yet men, not so much. And so let me say this. Men have less self-control than dogs. And I know that seems like, well, that's not right. Yeah, absolutely that's not right, but that's how it is. Men are... I have... I have two little girls that live in my house, and I am just terrified because I see a lot of little boys who look at pornography, and they're learning 
they're learning how to treat women from the pornography videos. And as somebody who has been involved in pornography, I know what it does up here. And I saw a good example of how to actually treat women. Now take these kids who don't have an active father figure in their house. So with that being said, men don't have self-control. Always, and this is what it says there at the end, I know it's cut off by my webcam, but assume the worst. Always assume the worst in people. Don't assume the best in people you don't know. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to go to this party and, and hey, it's going to be okay. I won't get raped. Why? Why wouldn't you get raped? Um, someone very dear to me was at a party and got drunk and they lost their virginity while passed out on a bed. It's not. It's not right, but it's how it is. Don't assume that men will be able to control themselves. Don't put yourself in a position trusting on the good nature of someone else. That's just that's just stupid. You got to think smarter than, than rapists because rapists sit there and, and and they sit there and they think about they think about how they can how they can destroy your life, how they can take you apart piece by piece. You got to be smarter than them. You got to be smarter than them. So look at how they treat people. Um, how do they treat waiters? How do they treat parents? How, you know, are they involved with people? Are they kind of standoffish? You know, watch out for these kinds of things. Uh, you don't want, obviously, to be dating a child molester. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Uh, what else is there to say? You, you don't want to be dating somebody who's going to be, you know, dangerous for you or for your kids. Um... <laughs> and also don't don't misjudge people and what I mean by that is a lot of times kids are raped by relatives by a guy that the woman that the mom is dating so just kind of watch out for that kind of watch out for that don't don't trust people with your kids like that just you know it, it's hard to remember that rape happens in a lot of different situations a lot of different causes a lot just a lot of different ages there's just so much going on you know you've got kids who are molested and, and, and touched then you've got you know college kids and then you've got LAP, you, you've got senior citizens who are raped now I, I don't get that you know and honestly the thing is is this we just have to watch out just watch out and if there's anything in your power to do, we'll do that. So, uh, what what are they involved in? Do they go to, do they go to church? Do they are they involved in any kind of a club or anything like that? Um, do you know what are they involved in? I, I think that that kind of says enough. So, what are a few ways to avoid rapes? Now, I'm not someone who's anti or pro gun i'm not democrat or republican i'm not trying to convince you of anything but if you do believe in guns owning a gun um maybe look into that for self-defense uh then there's um mace you know there's tasers um if you don't believe in guns it's really fine i'm not trying to convince you one way or another i'm just saying there are options of, of protection uh, take a self-defense class um i'm requiring both of my Actually, not both. All three of the children in my household will be um, uh, taking self-defense courses as a requirement. I am not going to ask them if they want to. They are going to be required to do it. They are going to get, um, as much as possible, they're going to learn um, how to use weapons, um, such as mace and tasers and those kinds of things. Just simple self-defense things. Um, I think I will also probably have them take a gun safety course because even if they decide to never use a gun, chances are they will run into a gun somewhere or somebody using a gun, and it's probably a good thing if they know how to uh, defuse a situation. Even if you don't believe in, in guns, you should probably take gun uh, safety courses. Just side note there. Um, avoid public intoxication. Don't go to parties and get drunk. Don't go to bars and get drunk. Don't go. I, I know with, with drinking a lot of times it's... A social thing, I get that, but it's just not a great idea. Not a great idea. 
Um, and if you do, make sure you go with someone else so that you know you can get home safely. Someone you can actually trust. Um, not somebody who will take advantage of you. So remember that, you know. <sighs> I know it shouldn't happen, but it does happen. It happens in back alleyways. It happens in, in behind dump and by next to dumpsters. It happens um, on, on club floors. It happens um, in, in taxis. It happens anywhere. It happens anywhere. It happens anywhere. Don't be naive about the nature of people. There is this idea going on that, that people are basically good, and I that's just so completely stupid. People occasionally do good things, but people in their nature are evil. Why shouldn't they do whatever they want to do? Why shouldn't they? See what I mean? Like, without God, there is no point in not doing whatever you want. Now, somebody might still be bound by their conscience and still do the right thing, but just because they feel guilty if they don't, not because they believe in God or obey God. Also, if there's anything that you can do, please do it. Get involved with the legal system. You know, hey, show up at court to, I mean, do something. Become a police officer. Just find somewhere you can fit and do something. We, we've seriously got to face this problem. This is something that... It's like people are just ignoring it, hoping that it'll go away. And I know we've all got bigger problems. You know, you've got war going on and, and whatever the media is, is harping on and on and on about now. God knows. They, they go off on these rabbit trails and you just get lost. But moral of the story being, besides all that, there's still a problem with sexual... Uh, sexual things. And if you look, um, yeah, there's actually something, I don't know exactly what they call it, but basically people are having less sex, mar you know, like marriage sex and stuff, uh, which is not a good thing. You know, um, when you're looking at porn and raping people, it's not a great thing. So, and just some, uh, just a few things, um, just a few things. Uh, I know that I could go on and on and on for forever, and if you've been involved with rape, you really know what I'm talking about. But, there has to be an end to the conversation somewhere. So, really, just think about these things. You don't have to agree with me on everything I said, but just try to be active and try to do what's right. And let me just say this, too. Oftentimes, rape happens even in, mar in marriage. And you say, well, how can you rape if you're married to the person? Well, actually, it's pretty clear. See, if somebody doesn't want sex and you make them have sex, see, that's that's rape. Uh, I heard this kind of analogy, and I think that it's good. Okay, let's say somebody says, I would like a cup of coffee. You make them a cup of coffee. Now, let's say you make them a cup of coffee, and they say, I don't want coffee anymore. You don't make them drink the coffee. Now, let's say you say, would you like a cup of coffee? And they say, no, I would not like a cup of coffee. Then you do not give them a cup of coffee. It's the exact same thing with rape. If somebody led you on to believe that they wanted sex, and then they say, you know what, I've changed my mind. I don't want sex. And you make them have sex. That's rape. That's rape. Now, if there is mutual consent, that is not rape. Both people say yes. I want to have sex, not, okay, I guess I'll, I'll have sex, but I want to have sex. Well, my wife wouldn't have sex with me if I didn't make her. Well, that's probably a problem. Maybe you should look at why doesn't she want to have sex with you and then resolve that issue rather than pushing that issue to the back and just making her have sex with you. I mean, just because you're married doesn't mean that the person isn't a person anymore. Now, in marriage, especially biblical marriage, there's the idea that you are both surrendering yourself for the betterment of the other person. So with that being said, try not to withhold yourself from the other person, especially for the sake of control. You should present yourself to the other person. And I know that that's scary and that's very intimate, but marriage is about that. And so, okay. Well, anyways, um, don't write, okay? Ripen's bad.